Welcome to this edition of Platform. My name is Muhammad Kuda Ubakar. Corruption is indeed a global problem and a challenge. In Nigeria, the Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Act was enacted in the year 2000 and seeks to prohibit and prescribe punishment for corrupt practices and other related offenses. The Act also establishes an Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, vesting it with the responsibilities of investigation and prosecution of offenses thereof. Provision has also been made for the protection of anybody who gives information to the Commission in respect of an offense committed or likely to be committed by any other person. In addition to national efforts, there are international laws and protocols to combat corruption. These include the African Union Convention on Preventing and Combating Corruption and the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, UNCAC. It is these perspectives to the fight against corruption that this edition of Platform examines titled ICPC and the Challenge of Global Corruption. This edition of Platform will also examine the challenges, obstacles and the successes ICPC has recorded especially from 2015 to 2018 as an anti-corruption agency under the Buhari administration. Our guest is the acting chairman, Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC, Dr. Musa Osman Abubakar. He's a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. He was born on the 21st of September 1969 and hails from Zamfara State. He was appointed secretary to the ICPC on the 1st of August 2017 and became acting chairman ICPC in March 2018. Before this appointment, Dr. Abubakar was an associate professor and sub-dean academics, faculty of law by our university, Kano. He taught Islamic law of succession at undergraduate level and comparative constitutional law and international economic law at the postgraduate level. He holds an LLB, Common and Islamic Law, from the Usman Udamfodio University, Sokoto, Masters of Law in Legislative Drafting from the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, and another Master of Law in Law of Development with distinction from the Warwick University in the United Kingdom. He completed his PhD in law in 2012 from the same Warwick University at the United, in the United Kingdom. Dr. Musa Osman Ubakar has published in many national and international journals. His research interests include child justice administration, criminal law, constitutional law, gender and Islamic law, international human rights law, and legislative drafting. Dr. Musa Usman Abubakar, acting chairman of the ICPC, welcome to Platform. Thank you very much. As usual, we have our set of panelists. We have Femi Okyo, head of NTE's Judiciary Desk. Always nice to be on the platform. Thank you for coming. Taiwo Adisa is political editor at Tribune Newspapers. Thank you for having me. Dr. Musa Usman Abubakar, acting chairman, ICPC, thank you once again for uh, honoring our invitation. We will begin from the beginning, as they always say. Uh, one will want to know your assessment of anti-corruption fight or the corruption level at the global level and at the national level in Nigeria. What, yes. What's your assessment? Okay, thank you very much. Um, my assessment of, uh, you know, fight against corruption globally and nationally uh, is that, um, you know, the uh, international community has actually accepted that corruption is endemic the world over. Uh, as such, they now make it on the front uh, burner. Uh, whenever any, you know, any issue is being addressed globally, corruption must always come uh, into play. Um, recently, I uh, attended uh, a meeting, a series of meetings in Vienna on the implementation uh, 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 of uh, the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, uh, in which all you know countries uh, uh, came together to uh, actually showcase what they are doing with respect to you know uh, the provisions of the UNCAC, that is the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, their best practices, uh, their challenges, um, uh, and you know for other you know countries to emulate. Um, this year, we focused on 
um, uh, preventive uh, measures under Chapter 2 of the ONCAC and Chapter 5, which is to do with uh, asset recovery. Uh, during the meeting, we also um, uh, addressed corruption in sports, uh, which means you know uh, the international community is also beaming uh, such light in the sport arena, uh, where you know uh, issues of corruption are found, uh, particularly things having to do with uh, match uh, fixing. Uh, you know, uh, you know, bribing, you know, players and what have you, procurement. In fact, the reason why they even made us to attend is, is because Nigeria will soon host uh, one of the international events, or, you know, sports events. Uh, that procurement is one of the areas where um, corruption is really, uh, you know, uh, rampant, you know, globally. Um, so uh, it means at the international level. It is taken very serious, and uh, countries are really taking measures to, you know, eliminate it. Um, at the uh, national level here, uh, you know, there is political will on the side of the presidency. Um, corruption, we all know, is one of the campaign promises of uh, the uh, president, that is President Muhammad Buhari, and uh, he has since he started. There was never a, a, a day when corruption is not discussed, as far as I'm aware, in this country. Um, so, um, at the uh, you know uh, the national level, my assessment is that we are really uh, you know uh, doing very well, uh, particularly you know as we are uh, trying to build you know uh, institution. I mean, trying to uh, employ some measures. Particularly preventive measures to you know uh, prevent people from even getting uh, you know uh, you know uh, getting you know uh, uh, opportunity to amass public wealth. Are the processes of fighting corruption mm -hmm. universal actually? Yes. Do they differ from uh, areas to areas? Advancement in uh, society and technology and technology are they universal? Um, actually, you know. Uh, you know, uh, each country, you know, uh, I mean, addresses this fight w within the context of uh, its own environment. I mean, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, we're, you know, uh, in this technological age, some countries have advanced so fast that where they are not even talking about petty corruption as we are talking about it here. Um, during that uh, uh, conference, uh, you know, one of the co conferences on sports, one of the issues we discussed uh, was the issue of e-sports, e-sports, and how, you know, um, uh, people are using e-sports to launder money. Mm. So, so, uh, which is something that uh, is not strange. Uh, yeah. strange to, uh, it is very strange to us here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it all depends on the uh, context. Each country, you know, has its own uh, uh, peculiarities. Uh, and they are taking measures so to fight so it. So if the processes are different, mm -hmm. country to country, then how does the Transparency International rate countries when it comes to issue of corruption index? Well, um, actually, you know, they rate, uh, you know, they have their own parameter of, uh, you know, uh, rating countries uh, generally. And um, they, uh, as far as I'm aware, they don't uh, consider whether this country is uh, developing. This one is developed. No, they, you know, they use a one size uh, fit all, if you like, you know, uh, criteria to, I mean, to, uh, uh, you know, rank, you know, countries. So, what is Nigeria's ranking now? Um, Nigeria's ranking now uh, is that uh, you know Nigeria. In 2017, it's ranked 100. Uh, it's number 148 over 80 countries that were assessed. 148. Last year, uh, we were 136. 36. You mean 2016. Yeah, 2016. We, we were 136 in the ranking right. out of 180 countries, countries. that were. Uh, you know, uh, assessed from that ranking, and it seems we have dropped then. Ah, uh, no, no, the, the point is, yeah. we got yeah. 27 
over 100. We scored 27 over 100 in the ranking. In 2016 or in, in 2017? 2017. 2017. 2016 uh, was 28. Okay. So 28 over 100. Over 100. Okay. Yes, so uh, uh, 2017, 27 over 100. So uh, that is why they said we are, uh, you know, I mean, our score is getting lower. Uh, lower. Yeah. Yes. Let's go to. But what is responsible for this low score? Because uh, in your own words, you said the federal government is doing enough uh, of, of anti-corruption fight, and you, the anti-corruption agencies, you said you are doing your your, your best. Yes. So, what on earth will be responsible for the low ranking? Well, um, or perception, if you like. Well, my own uh, understanding is that uh, you know one um, attention. Is not, or, or maybe they are not, uh, you know, taking into cognizance uh, some of the preventive uh, measures put in place uh, by, you know, uh, Nigerian government. I give uh, example of TSA, for instance. TSA, that is a Treasury Single Account, is one of the uh, most effective uh, way of, uh, you know, uh, preventing people from, you know, accessing the public uh, funds. Now, uh, whatever is meant for government is channeled into one uh, account, account such that for you to withdraw uh, money from that account, you know, it takes, you know, uh, a very long procedure. Central bank may have to, you know, uh, must have to approve it and what have you. Before, you will find several accounts, yeah. you know, uh, being operated by one agency. And so some of them are even secret accounts. Nobody will know about them. But now it is a duty on uh, banks to report any account, you know. So this is one uh, area that, uh, to me, was not actually taken into account by, by uh, Transparency International in their assessment. Uh, they concentrated uh, mostly on, you know, uh, you know their, the perception of activists um, they call them activists uh, some you know uh, yeah activists civil media society uh, civil yeah, civil and that's it mm. well, let's come mm. to what, what of the convictions uh, do, do, do they, don't, don't okay. they play any any role in well um, uh, the I various convictions and recovery of mm. uh, looted funds well uh, I don't think you know, for recovery, I, you know, I, I, I didn't discuss about, you know, the recovery, but I recall when, um, uh, uh, you know, the head of Sislak, I think Rob Sanjani, mm. was being interviewed by BBC. Uh, he made allusion to the fact that one of the reasons why we, uh, you know, uh, scored very low was the fact that, you know, there was no conviction in high-profile cases. And um, so, uh, for him, maybe uh, you know, uh, you know, politically exposed uh, persons need to be, you know, convicted before, you know, before uh, a country can be said to be doing well. Well, look at uh, the situation we are. You know, a person is taken to court, and because of the you know legal you know processes, uh, uh, processes yeah. it takes more than a decade before somebody is convicted mm. so for you to now use that as a yardstick for assessing a country I think um, uh, it will not be fair to uh, that country now let's go to ICPC yes. Yes. before we say that uh, your organization your commission is largely silent on mm. this corruption fight compared mm. to your peers even CCB or CCT uh, EFCC mm. and so now, why is the silence coming from ICPC when they are supposed to be very active, particularly at this period? Okay, thank you very much. Um, actually, the issue of silence of the commission comes as a result of some misunderstanding uh, uh, with, relate, uh, with relation to the provisions of our Act. There is uh, Section 27 so 4 of the Act which provides that when an information or report is received, it must not be uh, communicated to the public until you know the, the suspect is arrested 
or charge to court. So, um, uh, mistake, uh, you know, the, the, you know, uh, it, there was misunderstanding among the previous, uh, you know, uh, heads of uh, the agency, mm -hmm. such that they construed the prohibition to mean conjunctive, that when somebody is arrested, he must be arraigned before the court before the information about uh, you know, uh, that case is made public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually when I came uh, as a secretary of the commission, people have been uh, telling me that, uh, I mean, our uh, commission is almost uh, comatose. Mm. So I invited some, you know, senior directors there to, uh, you know, discuss why we're having this problem. So some of them now alerted me to this prohibition. When I read it, I told them, look, it says, O, which means uh, the, 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 the point is, it's dis disjunctive. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if somebody is arrested, you, re you receive an information about somebody. Uh, for you to uh, make that information public, you must have arrested him or taken him to court. So, uh, so uh, uh, you know, I said it is dis disjunctive. Therefore, there is no reason why, if uh, we invite somebody. Who, uh, I mean, we should not, you know, disclose it thereafter. Because as far as I'm concerned, the more you make it public, the more uh, you put yourself in the public domain. If, uh, you know, uh, for instance, we now announce that we have arrested A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, uh, no, not, uh, you know, uh, the public is not hearing anything about him. Uh -huh. They have the right to ask. Mm -hmm. But if we keep it mute without, uh, you know, informing uh, the public, you know, uh, in, in fact, that is I in itself can be a room for uh, s uh, some uh, elements to, yeah, uh, within the system to, uh, you know, uh, benefit from it. This new understanding mm -hmm. possibly uh, seems to give the picture that ICPC, that used to pride itself as uh, not engaging in media trial, may just well discard that understanding and begin to uh, invite the uh, media, which a few Nigerians also s complain about. Mm -hmm. So when you are about to go to court and all that, we see all the drama uh, go in, in, uh, arraigning people in court. Um, with this understanding of your uh, provision of the act now, uh, what position would ICPC take? Um, actually, uh, we've already taken a position um, of, uh, you know, informing the public of our activities. Once we make arrest, uh, you know, we disclose a little information. We'll only tell uh, the public that uh, Mr. ABCD has been uh, in, uh, arrested. We'll not even, we, you know, before, uh, you know, his invitation will not be announced because okay. it, it is not yes. contemplated. Okay. But once uh, he gets there, we now make it public that we've invited uh, and interviewed ABCD. That's it. And, and you're about arraigning ABCD? Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, sometimes we give very little information about you know, the reason why we're arraigning him. The court is a mm. public place mm. and people still wonder mm. why your cases are not continuously uh, followed up mm. in court. I mean, at, at the level of trial, mm. certainly there's no hide and seek anymore. Mm. And yet people still tell you that they don't know what ICPC is doing, even in court. Um, we're really doing, uh, you know, uh, significantly well uh, in court. Um, within the uh, period under review, so far, we've gotten about uh, 43, 48 convictions from, I mean, from 2015, May 2015 to date. We got about uh, 48 convictions and we lost 11 cases. Um, we are producing, you know, newsletter. But, you know, uh, when I came, I realized that, uh, you know, because, you know, the world is going paperless, mm -hmm. paperless. So the position of uh, the then uh, administration was that we should make it, you know, um, uh, online, online. But I feel we are not yet there. 
So, um, you know, for people to actually know what is happening, we are producing, you know, uh, you know, hard copy uh, newsletter. newsletter. Uh, I think we are, we are even bringing some to uh, NTA recently. So, tackling the the people that you, the suspect that you take to court, mm -hmm. uh, they usually tell us that um, corruption fights back. Yes. So, so, how does corruption fight you back at the SCPC? Mm -hmm. Well, um, personally, you know, I, I, I only, you know, joined the commission not long ago, yeah. and uh, I, I was, you know, doing administrative uh, you know uh, functions before it was some f two three months ago that i started dealing with the operations the operational matters oh, yeah. the only uh, uh, thing that i can see is an element of uh, corruption fighting back is you know when people you know uh, feel you are you know uh, very uncompromising and uh, um, they now report you to the higher authority, mm -hmm. perhaps uh, you know, uh, expecting uh, that maybe you be sacked for you know not acceding to their request. You mean suspects reporting you? Well, uh, perhaps suspects, or maybe some people closer to them. How many such cases have you had within the ICP? I I think I I you know I so far about uh, three or four. There are also mm. other means of uh, uh, pressure, not necessarily fighting back. Mm. Uh, do they, do people who have vested interest in ICPC matters, do they apply other pressures, like uh, meeting royal fathers to talk to you and all that? Well, I, you know, things like that are, are likely uh, to happen, but I'm yet to really uh, get, uh, where to really get into that. So they have not approached you with chief titles. Ah, uh, no, no. <laughs> not These 48 convic yeah. convictions that ICPC got within uh, 2015 and 2018, uh, how many of them are politically exposed persons? You see, so that they can fall within the line of Sislax uh, perception of you see, high, high, high profile you see, cases. You see, there is no uh, agreement as to what is even politically exposed. Uh, you know, uh, the meaning of. Uh, politically exposed uh, persons. Um, um, what we do is um, we call them high profile. We use the term high profile cases. Uh, uh, okay, cases. how many of them are high profile? <laughs> <laughs> high profile cases. Mm. And even even that one, you know, you, you have various uh, meanings of uh, high profile cases. Uh, to some, it depends on the amount uh, involved. Once the amount uh, reaches 50 million upward, then that one is taken as a high profile case. Uh, to some, it is the personality. Like a former governor involved. Uh, in a former chairman uh -huh. of a local government. Yes, even, even, even a magistrate. Mm -hmm. Once he holds you know, a public office, he's considered you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, high you know uh, a high profile, you know, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, in our context. Mm, okay. Yes, recently, you know. So out of 48, how many yeah, of them? Out of 48, roughly, I think we can say we could have about uh, uh, maybe seven or so. And how mm. many are you right now engaging or rather prosecuted? Um, well, um, at the moment, we're uh, uh, prosecuting. Um, three, w w uh, two former uh, governors, and um, uh, one is being, you know, uh, processed. In fact, we've been, you know, trying to get a hold of uh, the person, but uh, up to now we are still unable to. How much support do you get in these processes uh, of, for example, the Nigeria Police Force and other uh, security outfits? Do you? Um, Engage their support um, to yeah. further facilitate your, you know, our law, your processes. Our law, uh, you know, has given us the powers of uh, the police generally. But you know, the other side uh, of it is that we don't hold arms. It's one of the things we, we are actually clamoring to to have one day, mm. um, uh, which is also what we are looking for. Uh, you know, in, in the next few years. Um, we have, you know, a police deployed in our agency. 
which, uh, which we use whenever we are going for our operations. We also use uh, DSS. Uh, in most cases, when we are, you know, um, having, uh, you know, um, uh, to, to maybe conduct sting operations, uh, you know, and other operations generally, we engage uh, some of these uh, uh, agencies, and we really get uh, substantial support. Only that, you know, uh, you know, given the nature, the, the insecurity in the country, the number of, you know, personnel uh, we need. Oh. It's so uh, you know. Uh, and that can be readily available. Uh, yeah, uh, the number we are given very limited number, and this is one uh, area that is really affecting our operations. Apart from the number, let's look at capacity. You know that for your job, investigation is key, mm -hmm. and uh, to secure successful uh, prosecution, uh, you have to have strong you know, investigation, good prosecution, and then you depend on the court for mm -hmm. for trial. How? empowered are your staff in the area of uh, investigation and prosecution you see um uh, actually in the areas of uh, investigation we have highly i mean uh, trained investigators just as we have highly trained uh, prosecutors our development partners UNODC and DFID I, I mean they've been assisting us in training our uh, personnel generally particularly you know uh, in new areas money laundering and what have you so we have very fine you know uh, officers um the other aspect of it is you know you know um the witnesses okay. just as you know uh, you cannot get conviction without good investigation mm. you also need to have evidence before you uh, actually get conviction now, our witnesses, you know, although our law provides that, uh, you know, they are protected, uh, you know, informants are protected, mm -hmm. and that the information they give to you is between you and them and what have you, but our lawyers are having serious challenges. Sometimes, you know, you go to court, you interview your witness, after doing everything, you filled him to testify, only for him to turn hostile mm. oh. and give an entirely different you know uh, story mm. you know that will uh, exculpate i mean the person you are you are you are you are, you are, you are, you are prosecuting oh. and this is likely uh, to do with uh, maybe uh, maybe the Present. suspect or the accused you know uh, i mean either threatening the witness or incentivizing him oh. you know we are dealing with people that amass lots of wealth, lots of money. They have lots of money. Somebody can relocate a witness, mm -hmm. you know, out of this country. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Look, um, I can give you as much as this amount, you know, you know, as long as you promise not to come. Are you just, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, leave the country? Mm -hmm. So, you know, much as we would like to have um, uh, uh, high convictions. There's also this problem of, uh, you know, uh, witness protection. This area you have just mentioned, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act mm. provides for witness support. Mm. It doesn't take care of that? Well, um, you know, uh, to some extent, it has, uh, you know, done so. But how do you, you know, implement, uh, you know, uh, implement it if you don't have resources? Yeah. Um, I, I remember giving an example of, uh, you know, a case that was, you know, prosecuted by DSS uh, involving, you know, terrorism. This case, you know, when they realized that witnesses could, could be infiltrated, they assembled all of them in one uh, place and they didn't allow anybody to get access to them. Access to them. So you imagine, you know, uh, you know, an, an agency that, that has, you know, lots of resources to do that. There's no how that witness can be uh, called mm -hmm. or threatened by somebody. You know, uh, but in, in our own case, you know, we have very limited uh, resources to be able to do that. Yes, so uh, it's really a challenge. Mm -hmm. 
in recent times, yeah. your commission started engaging workshops mm. and uh, lectures and uh, uh, the institutions with lectures and workshops and all that. What informed that? Um, to be honest, we've been we've been um, uh, you know uh, doing enlightenment uh, program, which is one of our mandates. You know, we have three pronged uh, mandates. One is the 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 the, 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 the area of um, opera uh, the, the operation this um, um, enforcement that is uh, to do with uh, investigation prosecution. We have um, uh, public enlightenment. And then we have the other side, that is the, the preventive uh, uh, side, which is to do with uh, system study and review. So uh, public enlightenment is key to our, you know, uh, success in that uh, commission. And we've been, you know, you know organizing workshops, uh, engaging with uh, uh, CSOs, engaging with, uh, you know, uh, business uh, communities. Uh, engaging with youths, you know, uh, they generally. You are also engaged in universities. I, I, I took particular notice of your string of uh, association with uh, Nigerian universities. What has yes. become of that program and how useful, how, how, how much has it been able to transform mm -hmm. uh, the thinking in universities? Um, actually, the commission uh, had